1996. And uh, with, she has also uh, procured gold medal and certificates and pedonautics. Later on, uh, she accomplished her uh, post-graduation in the subject of uh, conservative dentistry and endodontics in 2003. In from the same college. She has also guided many postgraduate students in last 13 years and has been heading the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics at Guru Nanak the Institute of Dental Sciences and Research since 2017. The highlight is that Dr. Parumita is a keen researcher and has numerous publications to her credit in uh, well-renowned uh, uh, journals and she is also a reviewer of many n number of journals. So uh, the platform is yours, Dr. Paramita, and I'm very much sure that everybody will be enlightened by your presentation. Yes, uh, good afternoon, all, and thank you very much, Madam. That was really a very generous introduction. I don't know whether I'll be able to live up to the expectations. Anyways, uh, can I uh, start sharing my screen, please, Madam? Yes, please. Thank you. So thank you again, Vinita Madam. And thank you, Mahalakshmi Madam, Team Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics of SRM Dental College and IACD, who all have collaborated and very painstakingly arranged this faculty development program. A lot of planning must have gone behind arranging all this and the actualization of the event in a similar way we understand that as teachers, we also need to plan and work out a roadmap for effective execution of the MDS program, thus justifying the statement, if we plan to fail, we fail to plan and vice versa. So planning is very, very essential. In the next hour, with the help of few odd slides, I will walk you through the various core academic aspects of the MDS program, but focusing on seminars, general discussions of clubs and pedagogy. Now we have been conducting sessions, the PG sessions since forever, but in the absence of formal training in teaching skills, we learn most of the things that we do by way of experience or on the job. And I hope this presentation will only aid in structuring what we have been doing as PG teachers. So the primary objective of the MDS program is to prepare students on theoretical aspects, mastering clinical skills, provide research insights, and maybe groom a few to become future academicians. The range of academic activities is quite exhaustive. I have listed everything down. As teachers, we need to punch everything that is required to be done within three years of training, keeping in mind the actual working days and the student limitations. So if we can list it down, it comes down to the preclinical exercises, the synopsis submission, library dissertation, short-term research projects, the dissertation submissions. This also includes the presentation of, that is the oral presentation of seminars, journal clubs, clinical cases, and pedagogy. The list is endless and it continues. The students are also supposed to attend conferences, present papers in conferences, and partake in the interdepartmental seminars or clinical forums. They need to publish case reports in college journals. They need to present posters. They need to pay, publish the papers in index journals. They need to undertake teaching assignments. That is the undergraduate teaching assignments as per the discretion of the head. They need to uh, undertake certain continuing dental education programs. There will be certain periodic assessments, either monthly or as some uh, colleges do a semester system. It's an internal arrangement. And then there will be university examination at the end of first year and after two years. And the students need to build up a very strong academic profile for the practical examinations. And where does all this leave us as teachers? Students are not going to do everything alone. We are there as teachers to guide them. 
to see them walk this path and to help them walk this path. So in essence, whatever the PG program outline is, the core academic activities, we as teachers are an equal party to this. So DCI has summarized, but the summary is just the minimum requirement. For example, five seminar presentations per year, five general discussions, and out of the 300 marks in the practical examination, 20 marks is dedicated to something which is known as pedagogy. And now coming to this particular term pedagogy, the pronunciation is pedagogy. English is a very funny language. Like it is not plagiarism, it is plagiarism. So it is not pedagogy, it is pedagogy or pedagogy. So DCI has summarized everything. So out of this pedagogy, one is a practical examination pedagogy, which is eight minutes plus two minutes. And another is the undergraduate lecture sessions that are to be given by the PG students, because as MDS students, we understand we are also training them to become future teachers. So it always helps that during the PG program or just before the start of the PG program, we always have a departmental orientation session for the fresh postgraduate trainees in the presence of their peers to help the students understand the demands of the MDS program and the department specific instructions too. Here again, I have summarized what is required during the part two practical examinations. And I've highlighted the pedagogical aspects and the marks distribution for the practicals. Coming to the first aspect of my presentation, that is a seminar. It is an area which addresses the cognitive domain, specifically the knowledge, comprehension, and application part. Now, during the PG program, we do not have structured didactics like undergrad program by teachers. Instead, this format has changed to a well-distributed roster for seminar, journal club presentation, clinical case presentation, practical examination preparation, and all spread evenly across the three years or three batches of trainees. It will always be helpful if after looking at the Dental Council of India syllabus, we draw up a list of seminars to be presented by individually the three batches of students. So it'll help them get an idea of what is required of them. And there are a few basic rules of basic guidelines that can be told to them before they enter this very core uh, and ultimate, the sanctum sanctorum of uh, education, I would say that attention is of prime importance. When they are attending the core academic sessions, be it a seminar, a journal club, or a case presentation, attentiveness is the key. They cannot be distracted, and nor can we be distracted as teachers. We have to be very attentive of what is going on. It is a participative exercise that has to be mentioned because seminar is a bilateral process. It is not a didactic lecture only. The schedule for PG presentations for on-time start and on-time finish has to be emphasized upon by the teachers. The time limit for the presentations have to be kept in mind because time management is the key. For future professionals, it is the key. A notebook, a pen, or a pencil should be kept handy. And the teachers must encourage the question answer session because from the questions we can gauge the understanding of the participant as well as of the responder. Now, when it comes to the seating arrangement, what I prefer personally is the teacher should be seated so that they have a complete uh, visual observation of the student participant so that we get to know uh, by the body language, who is distracted, who is not, what is the level of attention, where do we want to address, where do we need to emphasize, whom do we need to pick up, all these things should be there. Well, of course, uh, to few it might sound like it's a uh, kind of school classroom, but we have to understand the students come from very diverse backgrounds, and nowadays in the uh, era of internet and all, the distraction is very high. So we have to focus ourselves and help the students also focus for this span, half an hour, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever span. For example, for a seminar, it could be anything ranging between uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, because usually one undergraduate class is 45 minutes to one hour duration. 
And for a journal club presentation, it could be 20 minutes. For case presentations, it could be 10 minutes. But the equal amount of time is dedicated to a healthy question answer session. So this is the basic to start with. And now I'm coming to the definition of seminar. What do we mean by seminar? When a student joins the program, uh, we tell them, OK, you have to deliver seminar. What does a new student know about it? What is a seminar? They have heard the term. They do not understand the essence of the term. So if we look at the definition now, it is a meeting. It is a small group meeting where a group of people discuss a particular topic. It's a class at a college or university, and this the teachers and the participants or the students discuss a particular topic. Now, here the focus is the topic, and it is an in-depth, informative session. That is why I said it is testing. This is the addressing the knowledge domain primarily. Now, these students, when they are asked to deliver a seminar, usually they go back to their seniors and ask the replication of the seniors' mistakes come. We tell them something. The students do not understand what is going wrong. So it is better that in the first few sessions, we just observe the students. We do not uh, highlight the negative points of the presenter. And we just, in order to step up the confidence level, bring out the students' qualities, inherent qualities, we focus only on the positive parts. And then slowly, we make the things a little difficult, little uh, analytical for them. And introspection will be a key. And the student will be asked to modify on their negative aspects. Coming to the presentation skills, I will deal with it later because a seminar may be presented in any format. It can be from memory, it can be using the whiteboard, it can be using a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so it can be anything depending on the HOD's discretion. But the essence is one particular topic, in-depth information is the key in a seminar. That is the essence of a seminar. And we have to keep in mind, a seminar is usually related to the long questions and the short questions that are asked in the theory paper of the student. So this is the DCI criteria for evaluation of the seminar presentations, where we can go through each and every heading and we can grade the students. It is always better to put down certain notes of our own indicating what is the plus and what is the minus of the students so they get an objective idea of how they can improve not an or not an open or vague statement that you need to improve the student needs to be told what particular aspect of a presentation or a topic or understanding the student has to improve upon so this is about uh, seminars and uh, when we come to the next part the next aspect it is also testing the cognitive domain or addresses the cognitive domain, but it is slightly higher level a step up because it is mostly related to the analysis, synthesis, and evaluation of the matter. Now, journal club, it is termed a club because in the historical times, it was actually a club by the scientists or the clinicians where they would sit and discuss certain matters. So, uh, it is defined by Mattingly as a gathering of individuals that meet on a regular basis to critically assess the advances in the scientific literature published in recent articles. Here, there are a few keywords. So it is a gathering of individuals. In our case, it is the department, the PG teachers, and the PG students that meet regularly. So regularity is a key to critically assess the advances. So this word is also a key word critical assessment. So there are two terms, scholarly assessment and critical assessment, which I'll describe a little later. Advances in the scientific literature, that is the review of literature published in recent articles. Now, what do recent articles mean? Usually recent is anything between the last two to five years. So this is usually termed as a, a recent. There is no nothing written in stone that this is re uh, recent. But this is a convention, a consensus among teachers that two to five years is recent. Now, when we choose the journal club articles, we assess them, present them, and the matters which are of vital importance is a trainee advances his or her training to invite the best from the seniors. By the seniors, here we mean the peers, the global peers. And critical appraisal is defined as appraisal based on careful analytical evaluation. See, each and every term is very important. So every time we look at a PG student or look at ourselves, 
we will analyze the situation. It is not like undergraduate classes or undergraduate learning, where we are learning only information and storing it information for recall from memory. It is analysis of a situation. That is why there are two terms, scholarly analysis or scholarly reading and critical evaluations, uh, critical reading. Critical is we analyze the pluses and minus. Scholarly is we go through the entire article or the entire matter to understand, okay, this is the essence of this particular matter. We are not getting into the nitty gritty or we are not doing a post-mortem of that particular article. Now, it is an integral part of evidence-based learning and it has been showed that evidence-based learning improves knowledge in students even 10 years after they leave the medical or dental school. So it's a proven fact. That is why journal discussions are so important. As I said, that it was a term used, the club term was used because it was actually a club for the scientists, for the clinicians, by the clinicians, but later on it became incorporated in our dental curriculum. Hence we call it general discussions or general club presentations. Now, what is the importance when we try to uh, tell a student to present a journal discussion or journal club, we have to understand why is it important ourselves, because it provides us with an update of literature as we discussed, it is a recent literature. Now, this will also help us in teaching techniques in the critical appraisal of the seminal uh, literature, research methodology, clinical epidemiologically, as well as the statistical methods. It promotes evidence-based dental practice, and it also provides opportunities for training in clinical decision-making and gleaning the clinical skill. It also demonstrates it's a method of continuing medical or dental education. And whenever we are undertaking any journal discussion, there is a healthy interaction, hence it promotes open discussion, social contact, and the ability to articulate our thoughts into words. When we ask our students to select articles or present or prepare for the journal clubs, we have to keep certain goals in mind because when the selection of the article comes, it is our responsibility, not the student's responsibility. They can only bring in lots of uh, choices or options. We are the ones who are going to choose based on the goals of the journal presentations. So journal presentation helps us to incorporate evidence-based dental practice in the day-to-day -day life. It develops the skill of reading and analyzing a situation critically. It increases the exposure to rapidly evolving scientific literature that we are seeing in dentistry currently, because every day is a new day in terms of technique and technology. It provides a unique opportunity to promote interest in research while learning about knowledge gaps and future research questions. This is of paramount importance. Whenever we are discussing a journal, a journal article, then we always try to find out the gap in knowledge. Now this gap in knowledge is the foundation or forms the ideas for our own thesis work or our own uh, short-term projects. So this is very important. It also promotes group studying and contributes to the development of habit of continuous reading. It also aids in debating skills. There are various methods by which we can do this. What kind of articles can we select? Now there are various formats. So we can select an article which will focus on different aspects of experimental design. For example, this is a double-blinded uh, uh, placebo control, uh, randomized control trial. Now the name itself indicates if I have to discuss this particular article, I have to know everything about the study design, the randomization, allocation, concealment. So it is an experimental design that also I get to know when I'm discussing this article. We could select the classic articles, for example, Bonacco's article regarding the edition. We could select an article which creates a controversy. Some novel modified method, I've given the examples also here. So this could be done as a form of debate. Somebody speaks for, somebody speaks against. So here we are encouraging participation from all, not only from the presenter, which is also very important. We could do a problem-based learning method, for example, the evaluation of titanium mesh and fibers in reinforcing endonautically treated molars. Now, this is a problem-based learning method. We understand this is the problem, this is the solution, how far we can fit into this, uh, this into the evidence-based learning. Then we could do a critical analysis of a single topic or article, for example, the wallpapering technique. So these are just examples. It can be anything, but these are basically, uh, see this paper is also from SRM. This is basically the different formats that may be used for an effective general discussion. 
So the first is article selection. When we tell our students to select an article, we always have to tell, use peer-reviewed, well-respected journals. We tell them how the journals are categorized, what is a P1 journal, what is the journal metrics. We should aim for randomized control trials because these are clinically more relatable. We, could, we should use recent articles and preferably landmark articles. By this landmark, I do not mean the studies which are using landmarks, but the landmarks means the citations are really good and high. And we should seek articles with new or provocative topics with unexpected results. Now, when coming to article analysis, what should we tell our students to do? They should assess for a very strong scientific methodology and rigor. They should be able to interpret the results both in terms of statistics and clinical significance. The results, how they are being applicable to the clinical practice and how the assessment of bias is done. Now the article presentation. Now, whenever an article is being presented by the student, we have to ask them to give a proper introduction. I'll come to this particular term, what is meant by introduction. The presentation should be really succinct and a lot of time, a healthy time should be dedicated for the question answer session or the discussion. And the critical analysis of the article is very, very important. The critical analysis is the merit versus the demerits. And how this particular article or this particular uh, kind of approach, scientific approach can impact our current clinical practice. So this is the essence of journal discussion. So I believe I have been able to make my point, the difference between how a seminar is done and how a journal discussion is done. Seminar is given set of topics out of a given syllabus. Students are prepared more of an information and delivery, whereas general discussion is processing and analysis. Okay, so the key questions that should be addressed is background. I mean, this presentation should contain all these, the background, and always we have to find the gap in knowledge, aim of the article, the methods have to be described in details, the results have to be discussed, and we have to look at the statistical result as well, and the conclusion. Now, when we come to conclusion, this conclusion is comprising two parts. One is the uh, author's conclusion and another will be conclusion of the presenter. What the presenter feels that can be concluded from this particular article <coughs> and whether the conclusions that have been given by the authors are relatable to the primary objectives, secondary objectives and the results they have obtained. And what future directions this particular conclusion is giving up because I said this forms the basis for us to think what kind of studies we can do. We are already discussing, we have by default a lot of information with us, what is the current uh, scientific literature and what is the gap in knowledge so we can decide on our own thesis topics for the students. It helps the teachers as well. Now, it is very important that we understand the, as teachers, what we should look at. First is what the student is presenting as we discussed, introduction method, results, discussion, critical evaluation and future directions. We should look at the presentation skills also, whether the student is clearly communicating the research study, whether the speech is clear and whether it is well paced, whether the presenter is establishing eye contact with the audience and the overall quality. And regarding the preparedness, whether the background knowledge is adequate, whether the presenter is able to answer the questions, what is the equality of distribution of the subheadings, whether there's a substantial contribution from each member of the participants. Like I said, it is not only the present, the present is the face. All of us who are present in that particular seminar or journal club discussion, we should be equally well prepared. Otherwise the entire um, uh, session falls flat it becomes a very meaningless session because there is no participation. How can we analyze a presentation? How can we understand whether the student is understood if we haven't read ourselves? So this is one particular uh, table uh, that I have drawn inspiration from many presentations. Whenever the student is looking at one particular article, they could use this particular format. Whenever we are reading an article, we can write down, we can summarize whatever we are studying under these following heads, citation of that particular article, the design, the objective, study population, sample size, the outcome, author's conclusion, and we can also focus on what we knew about this topic, what we wanted to know, and what we know now. 
So this will also give us a very comprehensive data set for future reference, not only for our journal clubs, for any article that we read, if we can put it in this format, I believe it will be very helpful. So to uh, summarize, the journal presentations should include the title, author, place of work, name of presenter, literature review, the problem or the hypothesis, the methodology, data collection, results, discussion, conclusion, and the future directions. So this is again the DCI chart that we have to uh, mark after each presentation. It should be done at the end of that particular presentation and the student will file it away neatly to build up the academic profile for the end of the session. Now, this is one side that I thought I would share with everyone. It is very helpful because many times it is seen that what we tell the students regarding uh, the, the study design or the methodology, uh, the student is not able to understand every time it is getting repeated. So it will be very helpful if teachers and students both can undertake these courses. These are free courses from Coursera or NPTEL SWAM portals, uh, the basic course in biomedical research or health research fundamentals, which is really helpful. These are eight week, 16 week course with a certification for FDP and for students in uh, uh, according to MCI for the community medicine students, this course is mandatory. So this will be very helpful. What we say will make more sense to the students if the students also take up this particular course. They do not need to write the examination. At least knowing the matter should be very good and helpful for them. Now coming to the last aspect of my presentation, that is pedagogy. So pedagogy is by definition the profession and science of teaching. So it refers to the or relates to the study of teaching strategies and how they influence thoughtfully considered and effective pedagogy is uh, crucial for helping students more uh, to develop themselves more successfully and in helping them develop high order thinking skills as teachers it is our responsibility to ignite the minds we cannot spoon feed them so if we deliver material and if we can teach our students to deliver material which will force us to think, our job is done. It is a successful teaching. The thing is, here it is seen that the one of the goals of recent medical and dental curriculum is to provide the students a strong and a core clinical foundation that is integrated across basic social population and other sciences why is this required now integration of subjects have been kept in mind by the policy makers because they want to bring together the various aspects for example if we have to deliver a talk on the epidemiology of dental caries it is not enough that as dentists we just know what dental caries is we have to know the epidemiology and we have to know the population part of it similarly if we have to deliver a talk on apex locators it is not enough that we only understand the clinical outcome or the clinical performance of an apex locator. We have to understand the working principle of an apex locator, which is physical sciences. So that is why pedagogy nowadays is aimed at a different sciences and integration of different sciences. That is, we have to understand the concept. So understanding the concept and delivering the concept, this is given more importance rather than just delivering what we understand and we, what we believe in. So there can be three formats. One is oral didactic, next is a chalkboard pedagogy, another is the PowerPoint pedagogy. Now coming to oral didactics, these are structured lesson plans with specific learning objectives and outcomes. This is what we do as teachers for our undergraduate classes. Now, this is also what we teach our students when they are to deliver lectures for undergraduate classes, as I have shown you, DCI also mandates that the postgraduate students should have an exposure in delivering lectures to the undergraduate students. Here as teachers, we have to keep in mind, it is not for the understanding of the undergraduate students. This session is how 
the particular student can be groomed to become future teachers. So here I believe if as teachers, we could devote only uh, say 15 to uh, 15 minutes to half an hour for the student uh, training to deliver the lecture, rest the teacher can take up, that is a good method. So this is the oral didactics, which will be applicable, applicable when we are giving undergraduate lectures. Chalkboard pedagogy, similarly, it is a blackboard centered or we can say whiteboard centered whatever way we say it is whiteboard centered classroom teaching it is a very effective teaching because here the entire classroom is focused towards what the teacher is trying to tell by means of showing teacher himself or herself is writing and this is one of the most effective methods it is kind of extinct now the next method is a PowerPoint pedagogy. It is a very effective way to enhance the learning if designed properly, and it allows us to project the visuals that would otherwise be impossible to be brought to a classroom. But there are certain problems here. Oral didactics depends on how we speak, how we train our students to speak. Here, the command over language is very important because as I mentioned at the beginning, English is a very funny language and it can mean differently if used in a different form and it's a matter of perception as well we come from different backgrounds our students come from different backgrounds so oral didactics has to be structured but the delivery is english chalkboard pedagogy blackboard pedagogy we have to have a good command students have to be taught to have a good voice command voice modulation and eye contact and the board work is very essential when it comes to powerpoint pedagogy we oftentimes see that the student or even sometimes ask us, we are just looking at our presentation. So the presentation becomes the presenter. The presenter is not the presenter, which should not be. So I have summarized a few key points that we should keep in mind when we are telling our students to prepare the presentations. For example, a single color, a single background, bullets to be placed on the left side, graphics to be off center, very few lines per slide, very few words per slide, the font size, the subheading size and the main body size, they should be very, very clear. Information should be spoken from memory, not read out. Distorted, bloody or low quality images should not be used. Resizing of an image should be done by dragging the corners of the image and each presentation should undergo multiple times of proofreading. The image size should be equal to the uh, resolution of the projector. The images of the radiographs if shown should have a very good grayscale contrast. And in ACD cases, there's a whole plethora of what are the images that should be placed that should be adhered to. Here, this is an example of not so good slide. Look at the use of the colors. The colors are totally not required here. This is just a critical analysis of and, uh, the merits and demerits are being discussed. We could just place it and present it in this fashion. Now, let us look at this slide. This is a picture. This is a text which has been just copy pasted. If you look at the picture, it is disproportionate. The fonts are illegible. <coughs> the table has been pasted from a book. And no citation, no legend. The image is no legend, nothing. This could be presented in this fashion. This also indicates that the students have spent enough time in understanding and then they have typed, not just copy pasted. So as teachers, we could demand such kind of presentations which indicate background work by the student, not copy pasting. Look at this example. This is this image and this image. Though I wouldn't claim that this image is one of the best images, but still, if we compare, this has a brightness which shows what we want to show rather than the participants or the listeners trying to look at what should be seen. So this was about presentations in short. And now I will introduce a particular term before I am, because I'm at the end of the lecture, which is known as micro teaching. Now I was emphasizing in pedagogy, we have two heads, one, the students, are to give lectures for the undergrad students, that is the PG trainings to the undergrad uh, students is a DCR mandate. And another is during the examination, it is the H plus two minutes format that the students are supposed to speak on a particular topic. Now this particular speaking for a very short period is actually known as micro teaching. 
Uh, many of us have applied for some projects, DST projects, etc. And most of the times we are asked to write a proposal statement or a concept paper, which is usually one page. Now, it is a humongous task to transform that whole lot of information into one concept paper. The idea is to focus our thoughts, focus our presentation, focus our views. We are forced to focus everything. So it is a very concrete piece of information. The same applies, the same logic applies here in micro teaching. If it is a very wide topic, even though it's a very wide topic, we have to narrow down, bring us to think about the must know and good to know areas, sequence our presentations. And if we can communicate well, we will be able to communicate a very broad topic in a very succinct manner within a very short time. This is the essence of micro teaching. And this is what we make our students practice for the last probably two to three months, just before the examinations where we give topics for pedagogy and what is tested during the part two practical examinations as well. So it is a real form of teaching with maximum concept and it focuses on basic teaching skills and an immediate feedback is desirable. This enables teachers to learn effective teaching skills. So this also, uh, this is not very important though, but still I put this slide. It helps students, teachers and practitioners to develop skills with uh, a smaller audience before reaching out to a bigger group. When we plan, again, planning is of utmost important, like Mahalakshmi Madam, we have to plan and prepare. So we have to have a clear path in mind. We have to make sure the audience, the listeners are ready to receive. The lesson is prepared by introducing the topic, the relevance is given, the sequence, the editing, and then comes the time management. Before the lesson is ended, there has to be a reinforcing or the take home message or the key points followed by a summary, followed by the feedback, that is the immediate feedback. Now, this is to improve the teaching ability, not to see how much the learner has learned. So DCI has this particular chart. Again, this applies to the undergraduate teaching classes. This does not apply to the uh, micro teaching or the pedagogy thing that we have to do during the practical examinations. So this is the what I'm, uh, I want to share with you is, since 2018, we have a list of uh, uh, pedagogy topics. I would just uh, pick up uh, one example. For example, this is bioceramic. If a student is supposed to speak on bioceramics as a pedagogy topic, what he or she should be speaking about. First is the introduction. Now, this introduction does not mean what a bioceramic sealer is. Of course, the audience, the skill set is there. So we have to start by the purported or the intended use, the composition, advantages, disadvantages, the literature consensus, the impact statements, summarize the key points, the clinical performance records, and the talk, get the feedback. Whereas if it is about a regenerative endodontic procedure, we have to state what a regenerative endodontic procedure is. We have to give a position statement. We have to give examples of randomized clinical mm -hmm. control trials, summarize key points, reinforce the take home message, and talk, get a feedback. So, uh, before I end this presentation, I uh, wish to share that this is what we prepare in our college, the academic details of a student, which is a very strong pro portfolio or a profile containing everything which we share with our external examiners. This will help the students to become more structured as teachers also. We know what we are supposed to do, and this might help the students in future. So I wish to end my talk here and uh, big thank you for your time. And I wish to acknowledge my department, all the teaching faculty, non-teaching faculty, and all my students. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Dr. Parimita. The objective of a FDP program is to maximize the ability of any faculty to, for their teaching and nurturing the students. And uh, you have really added so much of knowledge in the topic which all of us actually encountered on day to day basis. Your topic, uh, your points, particularly on time uh, discipline and correct pronunciation. From today onwards, I am going to pronounce it pedagogy rather than. Pedagogy. I'm sorry if I have ruffled a few feathers, madam, but <laughs> I look. No, this was no, so, so happy that you actually shared the correct pronunciation, okay? Because our mother tongue is uh, Hindi, it's not English. We can, English. And second, so funny, funny that two G's in the same word, one is pronounced as G and the other is pronounced as J. It's, yeah, funny. 
and then uh, you actually differentiated between the seminars uh, how to select a topic for the seminar and the uh, journal club that because they are totally two different entities so what a faculty or a teacher should keep in mind while selecting those topics and uh, over than that your emphasis on dialogue participation by faculty and students during these sessions is really uh, something very very important and for that not only just allotting the topic to the students rather going through those to those topics critically analyzing and then sitting there and participating really um, these things are so much important and i really congratulate mahalakshmi ma'am and the whole team because you are helping us to raise our own bars until up till we we'll, uh, just raise our own bars how we uh, the students we can raise the bars of students so it was really good i have one question dr paromita if the time permits ma'am can i ask one yeah so uh, actually uh, during seminar evolution format in uh, provided by the dci in that we find that there is uh, one column that whether other relevant literature has been searched and the other is whether cross references have been checked so can you please differentiate between the two uh, ma'am relevant literature is whatever is relevant in the terminologies that is present in the topic for example again the bioceramic sealers so we have to know what bioceramic is what a sealer is these are two entirely different chapters but cross reference would be something which is very related to a performance of that particular material this is one example of a material i am not getting any other example in mind so uh, if i have to summarize this is one is a wider base another is narrowing down this is what if i have made myself clear uh one more question if i please please steps in micro teaching once once more can you elaborate the steps of micro teaching okay so micro teaching is a topic which we have to break down into must know and good to know areas if time permits or the essence of the topic permits we embark on the good to know otherwise it is just must know areas we plan the beginning the middle and the end we, what we have to keep in mind before we end we have to it is not a summary it is the key take home message summary is different summary is what i have spoken about key messages or take home messages is what i should keep in my mind what i should be remembering so these are the end points at the beginning the introduction i wanted to speak about introduction most of the students start introduction it's an elaborate thing introduction is bringing the audience to a level playing field so that we begin at a point where most of the audience or most of the listeners can start that's the starting point that's the introduction and then we sequence it sequencing is prioritizing the important points not so important points and then we do something which is known as the allocation this is so much time this is so much time time management and we end it and we take an immediate feedback that is micro teaching so when we conduct the pedagogy sessions for the practical examination not for the undergrad teaching sessions we must encourage all our teachers to give a feedback and the students also should have an open mind to receive that feedback that's also very important they should not draw themselves into a shell that i'm worth nothing that is how we speak to them is also very important so that is there yeah true very true thank you so much uh, dr paromita for that wonderful lecture as usual crisp and clear and uh, you know very very uh, you are always very methodical i've seen that so this is very, very much visible in your uh, presentation and thank you vinita for that ever smiling beautiful uh, lady who always gives her little thoughts always for everyone and uh, that really is so useful as well thank so you. thank you so much um, we now move on uh, welcome dr sanjay tiwari sir 